we are now very happy to share our next speaker's vision with you. If you want to learn what the digital foundation of a connected, integrated, and intelligent building is, then you are in for a treat. Put your hands together for the Vice President, Chief Technology Officer, and Chief Architect at Bosch Building Technologies, Andreas Mauer. Wow, so I am super extremely excited to be back on the BCW stage. Last time in 19 and then in 20 and then all these funny things happened. So I'm extremely happy to have you in the room and also you all out there. Uh, so welcome. And I have three little things I like to start with. The first is that uh, I'm extremely excited to be back on stage. The second is they told me to entertain you. Um, and actually, whenever I get commands from my CEO, I will do that without any doubts. So I try my best to entertain you a little bit here as well, because the world in where we're living is just so serious. And I think even with a great responsibility to make uh, a huge responsible uh, purposefulness for our planet Earth, still we can have fun doing this, I hope. And then the third, of course, is um, there is this question in the universe that's about to digitize or to digitalize. Is that even a question? And that is uh, something that I want to talk with you today about. I actually want to take you into a little journey today. So these digital foundations that are required in order to do everything that my um, peers actually talked about uh, the last minutes ago, uh, turns out technology is not the issue any longer. <laughs> Thank God. Um, we have a lot of tech, but actually to smartly compose the tech that we do have and leverage a lot of partner goodness uh, is key. And so collecting and analyzing information is what people are always uh, talking about when they want to understand what is happening in a commercial building in terms of processes, in terms of user journeys, in terms of what systems are involved. It turns out you need to have quite a deep domain level understanding of what that means. And to actually standardize that and digitalize that so that you can have an end-to-end -end operation and transparent view of everything that's happening in the building. Because it turns out that every tiny little piece of energy consumption matters. So I like to bring you into this uh, kind of digitalization context. And you see here our lovely headquarter in Krasbrunn. It's a 3D model, uh, CAD, BIM, you name it. And so whenever you plan these lovely buildings, the planners, the architects, they have the best in mind, right? They want to make this an efficient building. They want to have the highest level of comfort. And of course, they want to have it sustainable. And then we install all of this goodness into the buildings, and then we take it in operation. And what happens? Well, the light goes a little dark because these systems, once in operations, they continuously need to care. They have to have a caretaker, right? Because these systems, the moment you turn them on, they electromechanically drift away. If you don't watch them, if you don't observe them continuously. And so there's a lot of things that are actually causing this. There's no holistic observation of what's happening in the building. There is a, a lack of completely information transparency. What do certain informations mean in a certain context, in a certain process, with a certain user journey involved? And then, of course, that also is causing that the equipment is unnecessarily exercising. Okay? So that is then also causing the fact that the equipment underperforms. So now, a typical classic journey you may have all been in. There is Alice in the meeting room, and she is actually calling the operator because it's simply too hot for her. Because aircon doesn't work, right? So the classic. The operator goes to the basement, uh, tries to lower the set point while Alice is opening the window. That's a perfect match, right? The air conditioning works to its hardest, and the windows open, energy is being wasted, and the equipment is unnecessarily exercised. Perfect, right? So the promise that we make in order to detect these kind of scenarios and many others is to really digitalize these experiences. So we provide insights from not just one system, but from multiple systems and cross-domain integrated. And the second is we bring these informations into a context, into a context that really makes these informations a transparent set of data. 
And the third is that, of course, then anticipates that the equipment really unnecessary is being exercised and actually fails early. And that all pays into cost savings and operation excellence, the improved user experience, and of course, ultimately, that makes the sustainability momentum. Isn't that a cool story? Good. If you agree on that, then the next thing is, what is it really that we need to do in order to bring these things today live? And we identified at Bosch Building Technology 11 building blocks to get to this, what we call the ultimate transparent experience. Um, and we have 11 blocks, and I'll walk you through them. Don't, don't, don't be scared. Um, it's easy. Uh, the first is we have that things that sitting in the building, so we call that the edge. And we make the edge intelligent. We connect it to the cloud so that we can cross-domain reason about things. Because you may remember these domain-specific systems, they have all been designed and implemented uh, in their siloed kind of world. And it's completely OK. But if you now want to cross-reason about systems, you have to have some rendezvous point where you can actually bring these insights together. So we create that new solution space between the edge and the cloud so that we can actually uh, offer a bunch of IoT services that jointly reasoning about the things that are happening cross-system, cross-process in the building. Now, the third pillar you heard a couple of times today as well, uh, once we have that connectivity established, we bring these informations into a digital replica. We call this the building digital twin. And the building digital twin is powered by the goodness of semantic knowledge. So ontologies, that's what the industry calls this. We have open sourced uh, as Bosch Building Technologies uh, the Bosch Ontology Central at GitHub. You can find three ontologies. You can grab them, and then you can create beautiful digital twins like these. OK, so you see the building, you see the IoT connectivity, and then you see the, the um, yeah, I always say, uh, think of an ontology like a, a grammatical vocabulary of a domain, right? Um, a building has a floor, a floor has a room, a room has to have at least a door, otherwise it's a secret room, right? And, and then you project these kind of systems on top of, like an HVAC system. And once we have that, then we continuously synchronize information in both ways, and they are semantically contextualized and enriched information. That is a key element in our strategic foundations. And uh, once we have that, we can actually go to block 5 to 11, so we can continuously monitoring, and that gives us early insights about the systems, about their behaviors, about business impacts. And the sixth one is once we have that, we can now track the past. So we can actually look at the system's operations continuously, semantically, and we can learn from the past. And we can also have these semantic qualified trails. It turns out if you want to really know who and in which context energy is being consumed, it's not just enough to have a sticker on the wall saying you are ESG certified. You better know where do you waste energy or consume energy, and could you even have it optimized. The seventh building block is then the analyzation. So I can now, of course, to, um, go into my history and into my semantic qualified information set, and I can find anomalies. Where was the system behaving good? Where was it behaving bad? Uh, where did I actually unnecessarily consume energy, for instance? So early warning indicators for the business and for the technology uh, people that operate it. Number eight is then prediction. Because I have the past, I can now also look into the future. I can actually really do forecasts. I can prevent downtimes. I can early up on order spare parts because I know the air handler unit or the air, uh, the, the VAV will actually fail soon. Okay. And then number nine, and that is where the real power now comes alive, is I can simulate things. I can do things like, what if Alice would not have opened the window or left it open while she was going into the canteen? How much energy would I potentially be saved? And how much more uptime would I then get for the HVAC equipment? So, and we all know we have less and less talent. And the same applies to the commercial building domain. Uh, so I can even use this to educate new talent. Think of gamification. So I can replay everything that happened in the real world and show it to new kind of employees so that they can learn what it means to operate such complex systems. And then, of course, the next discipline here really is about autonomy. So I can autonomously or semi-autonomously actually steer and command and control and reparameterize the things that are in drift. Okay? And that is where our, I call it the democratization of our domain expertise put into these ontologies and then actually cross-integrate them and operate them. 
And the last building block is interaction. So remote, COVID ta taught us remote experience is, is very important. So remote maintenance, remote interactions with augmented reality is all things we can now do because the tech is out there and uh, we have all, all of those semantic qualified descriptions. Now, these are the 11 blocks that we identified, uh, and that makes up the industrial metaverse for commercial buildings. You heard the metaverse word yesterday a lot, I guess. So, and again, is that cool? Does it make sense? I hope so. So now, what's in it for you? Okay? So, and you are either an owner, an operator, or an occupant. And they all have different kind of ambitions and goals, right? So the owner is really, he wants to have his portfolio, the most sexy uh, uh, estate uh, ever. The operator wants to have everything working good, and the occupant just wants to be happy and comfortable. So, right, so the, the owner cares about the, um, the reviewing revenues, the planning investments, the operator, of course, he wants to have that the tickets are closed and the, the occupant just wants to be happy and connected. And they all pay into the bucket to get to the ultimate goal to have a comfortable, efficient and sustainable experience. Now, think of Alice again here. She has a mobile phone now with the system, and she opens the window. Now the system fully automatically detects, hey, there's the window open, but you told the air condition to work at this hard. It's not, not a smart idea, so please uh, uh, either close the window or relax the air con. The operator now, he can look at a lot of different domain uh, perspectives. So you see here a couple of domains, right? Incident management, fire alarm systems. And it can really drill into that and get a single pane of glass to see how op operations are uh, actually behaving uh, across of those domains. And that's beautiful. And it gives you a lot of, uh, from an operator point of view, a good feeling that everything is really working to its best and most efficient level, OK? And then um, we can even detect now across domain insights. So because we um, apply uh, AI te technology behind the scenes, we use the knowledge graph powered by the semantic uh, ontologies. We use time series systems to find anomalies because they are semantically qualified, and we then, the third pillar we use is deep reinforcement learning, where we educate domain-specific brains and deploy them from the sky to the, to the sites. And uh, that gives us then also the power to drill into that situation that Alice just caused. And now you can see what kind of effect it had in terms of energy consumption versus exercising equipment and so far and so forth. And of course, then you can also create tickets and send Alice then system-wise the push notification so that, that she closes the window. And Last but not least, from an owner perspective, if you have a bunch of portfolios, you probably want to know how are my sites doing in Germany, uh, Grasbrunn versus Berlin. And here you see again, Grasbrunn has that inefficient cooling issue in building 51 because Alice opened the window while the aircon is working to its hardest. So this is, uh, and we even give you a recommendation what to do in the future uh, to save uh, investment uh, in order to be efficient, comfortable, and sustainable. And that is all powered by the goodness of what I showed you in these 11 blocks. Now, is this cool? Do you want to have this? Right? Yeah. Yes, and I mean, it's not just theory, thank God. We announced at Alight and Building, 4th of October, my friend Marcus and myself, Nexospace, which is our IoT service brand under which we're marketing all of those IoT services that give you that cross-domain integration experience. This is just fantastic. And you see collecting, analyzing, optimizing, everything I just told you. And you see on the left the building. And the building is more than just HVAC, right? We have all of those different systems, like a light system, like an access control system, video civilian systems. We do have external ticketing systems, ERP systems. You name them. And then in the middle, we put that Nexospace universe, and that is also powered by our data now, right? It flies through the Nexospace universe and serves you all of those great experiences uh, to the daylight. And we have a couple of those clusters identified. There's more to come. Uh, we have uh, two services already, two, three services already available. We even have customers, pilots, where we run this. And you see in the middle bucket to cloud is actually where these 11 blocks are really glorified. This is not just 
just slideware. This is real stuff, friends. So this is executing in the, in the cloud. This is executing in the on-sites. We actually are connecting a lot of our domain-specific systems we have at board building technologies, including the automation um, new unit that we actually acquired and, and many other domains to come. Uh, and of course, there's always the building. The building will never go. And there's always also intelligence required in the building. That will never go away. And uh, this is all I have today, friends. I hope I entertained you a bit. If you have any questions, just feel free. Uh, I'm here, and I'm Andreas, and I thank you a lot.